Hey, this is Brian back with another WordPress video tutorial. Today we're going to talk about how to create and edit WordPress pages. The first thing that I'd like to do is talk about WordPress pages and posts and kind of outline the differences between the two. Um, if you look at this uh, WordPress blog that I've set up, you can see that uh, in the main content of the page we have our WordPress posts, which are individual blog entries that are uh, basically by default displayed in reverse chronological order. Uh, that means the newest posts are displayed first and the oldest are displayed last. Um, now these are different from pages in that pages are content that occur outside of this chronological view. Um, I would say that pages are the primary content of your site. That is, they occur on your primary navigation, whereas your posts are displayed in archive format, again, from uh, newest to oldest. Um, that's not to say that your pages are any more important than your WordPress posts, um, but they kind of support your WordPress posts in a way. Um, an individual might read your WordPress posts, your blog entries, and want a little bit more information about your company or about you, or they might want to get in contact with you to uh, order a product or uh, to, you know, contact you for whatever reason. Another way to think about WordPress pages are that pages are WordPress's answer to creating a static website or static content within your website. When you first learn how to create websites, you might have learned how to do that using basic HTML and you would have a separate file for each page of your site, such as about.htm for your about me page. You can create a site similarly using pages within WordPress. Um, you can basically create your pages, as I'll outline in a couple of minutes, and then you can assign one of those pages to be your front page for your WordPress site. Basically what this is going to do is completely hide the blog functionality from your users, so they'll never see your, uh, your WordPress posts unless you change the configuration of your site later. Now this doesn't mean that uh, you'll forever have a static website in WordPress. You can go back at any point and change your front page to be an archive view, or you can change the front page to another page. Um, everything is configurable and nothing is set in stone. You might be wondering what kind of content should go into a page versus a post. Since your posts are displayed in chronological order, stuff that falls outside of that ordering are usually pretty good candidates for pages rather than posts. For example, if we look at my primary navigation, I have uh, cart, checkout, content, contact us, my account, a uh, sample page, which we're going to get rid of at some point, uh, shop, track your order, and ugly pictures of me. <laughs> now this is all stuff that has nothing to do with the date. It's information that is always true regardless of the date that it was created. Um, this doesn't mean that this stuff doesn't change. For example, if you have an About Me page, the information about you can change from day to day and you would go into that page to update it. But it's information that you want your users to always have access to regardless of what page or post they're currently on. So it's stuff that's going to display on your primary navigation. Well, let's go ahead and create our first page in WordPress. Um, in order to do that, you would start at your WordPress dashboard. I'll assume you know how to get there in your own site. Um, and from the dashboard, we're going to find the Pages menu. And there's two different ways to create a new page here. You can go to Add New directly. Or under Pages, you can go to the All Pages screen, which is where you would manage all of your pages and edit existing pages. Um, and you can click the Add New link from there. The first field that you're going to see on the Add New Page screen is the Title field. Um, there's some considerations when you name your page. Um, the first is that common pages such as About Us or the Contact Us page, there's certain language that users on the internet expect to see to find these pages, so don't get too creative in naming them. Um, we're just going to leave this as About Us. If we name it anything that users aren't used to seeing, they might actually have a hard time finding that page. Um, the second consideration is search engine optimization. When naming your pages, you're going to want to think about keywords that uh, you would expect users to type into Google or another search engine to find this page. So you'll want to include those in your title. 
you can actually use a plugin such as the Yoast WordPress SEO plugin to help you with this. Um, I would recommend uh, installing that and using that on your site. The next field that you're going to see on the Add New Page screen is the permalink field. Now, depending on how you have your permalinks set up, which uh, a permalink basically means the URL to get to the page that you're authoring, depending how those are set up, you're going to have different options here. Right now, mine are on the WordPress defaults, which basically names your page after its unique page ID in the WordPress database. Um, this is not optimized at all, but since we're just playing around with this site, I don't care at the moment. Um, if you had your permalink structure set up a little bit differently, you would actually be able to change this. Um, but we're not going to do that at this time. I'll cover that in another video. The next field that you're going to see on the new page screen is the editor. Now the editor actually has two modes that it can work in. It's got visual and HTML. The visual mode works just like any other graphical uh, text editor, such as Microsoft Word. Um, you can write your text and you can select your text and apply different styles such as bold, italic, or strike through. Um, you can create lists such as an unordered list. You can create uh, quotes. Whoops. And of course you can align your text centered, right, left, etc. Uh, create hyperlinks. You can add page breaks. Check your spelling. Um, you can go into a full screen mode that uh, allows you to see a little bit more of your uh, of your post at once if it gets a little too long. And now this button right here is the show hide kitchen sink, which uh, basically gives you more options. And I always have this toggled on because there's some very important stuff on the second line right here. Um, primarily, I want to look at this drop down right here. It's the format drop down. It allows you to select your headings and a variety of other HTML styles. These are very, very, very important. You don't just want to select your text and apply bolding or up the font size. You actually want to use headings to create a higher hierarchy within your page. Um, this actually helps your search engine optimization and it breaks your page up in such a way that it's easier to read for your users. Um, we've got a couple other options right here that actually aren't part of WordPress by default. Um, this is part of a plugin called WooCommerce and this is from my Nevo slider plugin. Um, as you can see, plugins are actually able to add additional options to the uh, post and page editor. Now, as I said, there is an additional mode that the uh, editor can work in called HTML mode. If I click that tab, I can see the actual HTML code for my, uh, for my WordPress post. Now, if you know HTML, you can go in here and get a lot more control over your, your post or your page as you're editing it. Um, just don't be surprised if you switch in between visual and HTML. Don't be surprised in the least bit if WordPress mucks up your code a little bit. I generally try to stick to one or the other, and I'm very comfortable with HTML, so I often use that. But as a beginner, don't be afraid to just use the visual editor either. It's a very good option. Now, moving to the right-hand side of the Add New Page screen, we can see the Publish Box, or Meta Box, as they're actually called in WordPress. Um, if you look to the uh, to the top of each of these meta boxes, you're going to notice you've got a little down arrow. You can actually minimize these things if they're in your way, and I believe you can actually drag them around and switch the ordering of those if you would rather have the uh, page attributes or featured image at the top. You can easily do that. Um, however, under the publish box, we have a bunch of different options here. We have the save draft button which allows us to uh, save our page in a uh, editing mode. Basically, it's not, not published to the public part of our website just yet. Um, well, let's go ahead and click Save Draft. Um, that's very useful when you have a long page or post that you're working on that you haven't completed yet or you haven't finished uh, proofreading yet before it goes live on your website. Um, the WordPress post that I've created that goes along with this video. I've actually clicked Save Draft probably about 10 times during the editing of that post. Um, to the right of that we have Preview, which 
opens up a new tab and lets us see what our new page looks like within WordPress before we've actually published it. Um, below that we have the status option. If we click edit, we can see the current status of our post or we can change that. Uh, the pending review actually sets it into published mode, but it marks it that it needs to be reviewed by a uh, WordPress administrator. So the administrator can go in later and proofread it and publish it. Under visibility, this is a pretty interesting option here. We have public, which is basically stating that the page is in public mode, that uh, everybody can see it. That's the default, by the way. Um, we have password protected. Um, we can click that option and then type a password in. And if we publish that page, it's actually uh, only going to allow users that know the password to view the entire page. If we click private, um, that puts the page in a mode which is uh, published, but it's only visible to users who are actually logged into the site, such as the administrator or other users that you've created. Um, under the publish option, if we click edit here, you can see that we get a uh, date and time field. Uh, we can tell WordPress when we want our uh, published post to be visible. Um, we could change this to a minute or two into the future, and if we went into the public WordPress site, we wouldn't be able to see our about page until that date and time passes. That, uh, that option is very useful. If you create a page, for example, that goes along with a uh, fundraising effort that begins at a certain date and time, um, you can create the page long ahead of time and set it to be published at that specific date and time, and it won't be visible on your page until that fundraising effort begins. That's a very neat feature that WordPress has. Uh, finally, below that, we have the move to trash, which is obviously going to delete your page. Um, the nice thing about Move to Trash is that it actually functions like the recycle bin on uh, Windows. You can actually pull it right back out of the trash later. And finally, we have the Publish button, which saves your post and puts it into a published mode where it's actually viewable on the visible part of your website. Um, so let's just go ahead and we'll click Publish right now. And if we go back to the public WordPress site and do a quick refresh. Now we see that, that uh, that's displayed on the primary navigation of my website. And we can click it and there it is. Uh, getting back to the editor, the next meta box that we have to talk about is the page attributes box. Um, we have a couple options under here. The first one is the parent option, which allows us to create a hierarchy of pages within our site. Um, let me show you what I mean by that. If I go to our homepage, I can see that I have so many top level pages right now that uh, the primary navigation actually drops down to a second line, which is pretty unattractive. Um, if I look at uh, the My Account option, under my account, there is change password, edit my address, and view order. Um, basically, what this means is that each of these pages has the my account page set as its parent, which created a nice ordering of pages. These are all related to your account, so it makes sense to file those away under that page. Um, what we're going to do to get rid of this second line of primary navigation is file away ugly pictures of me and contact us under the about us page. This seems to me like a fairly uh, smart way of grouping our pages as both of these pages are related to me. So the way we're going to do this is to go back to our pages listing by going to the dashboard and clicking the pages link. And here we have a list of all of our pages. I'm going to find the contact us page and I can actually just click quick edit which gives me a smaller editor right within the listing of pages and I can select parents and select about us and click update and I'm also going to do the same thing for the ugly pictures of me page and click update and if I go back to my home page and refresh it 
there we go. As we can see, both of those pages are filed away under About Us. The second option that's available under the Page Attributes meta box is the Template option. Um, this is very specific to the theme that you have active on your website and the plugins that you have installed. Um, by default, the template is going to be set to default template. Um, but depending on your theme and on your plugins, you might have additional options under here. It's fairly common to have a one, two, or three com column template for your theme. But again, this is completely dependent on what theme you have installed. So we're just going to leave this at default. And the third and final option under page attributes is the order attribute, which uh, customizes the order in which your pages display on your navigation menus. Um, if we go back here to our home page, we have about us, cart, checkout, my account, sample pages, shop and track your order. Now, that looks suspiciously like they are occurring in uh, alphabetical order rather than uh, any other kind of order. Now, we can customize this by going back here to the page editor and using the order attribute. Um, what you need to keep in mind here is that the higher the number you assign, the further down the line your page is going to display in your navigation. Uh, so let's give this 10 because the default is 0. And um, basically what happens is when pages have the same order specified, and again, all of these have 0 because that's the default, um, they're going to break the tie by using alphabetical order instead. So that's what happened there. So let's go ahead and give the About page an order of 10. And we'll go back here and refresh, and that should display at the very end of our navigation. And sure enough, that worked. The next feature that we want to look at is the Featured Image option. Um, this is very specific to the theme that you have installed. The theme actually needs to support featured image in order for this to even to be displayed. And uh, where the featured image actually gets displayed on your site is very theme dependent as well. So let's just go ahead and show you what this is going to look like on my testing site. We'll click featured image. And this brings up the uh, media upload or selection dialog box. And let's just select a file. Here I have an image that's actually just the page editor from WordPress. We'll click that and upload it. And click Use as Featured Image. And as you can see, there's lots of uh, attributes that you can set on your image, but we're not going to worry about this right now. That's a topic for another post. Uh, we'll click Save Changes, or you can just click the X at the top, whichever. Actually, I take that back. Click the X to close that. Um, now let's go ahead and preview our changes with our featured image. And as you can see in the uh, theme that I'm using, the featured image appears right above your primary navigation, which doesn't look pretty considering the image I use, but you can see how that would be a very useful feature. Well, that's all I've got for today. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you guys will leave me uh, any suggestions you have on how I can improve these tutorials uh, down in the comments. I check them regularly. And uh, go ahead and subscribe to my feed if uh, you like what you've seen. We'll see you.